Next up, we've got the Iowa State Cyclones. Now, Matt Campbell, bit of a downer last season. Did not go as well as anybody had anticipated. Seven and six on the season. That includes a bowl loss to Clemson. Now, they were not expected to beat Clemson. I know that that was only a one-point spread, but the difference in talent was vast. Incredibly vast. I mean, it was... It was just ridiculous. I, I don't even know what else to say. So they went 7-5 and five in the regular season. Their postgame win expectancy said that they were 8.29 and 3.71. Uh, so closer to 8-4, and four, maybe even close to 9-3. and three. There were some very interesting games last year where they just beat themselves. They just absolutely, I mean, they had four turnovers against Iowa. Like, and that was a 10-point game. They should, have, they should have won that game. Bottom line. Uh, West Virginia, they should have won that game. I mean, it was just... So many different things. I think uh, uh, Texas Tech was a three-point game that they lost. I, it was just mind-blowing the way that they were able to lose some of those ball games with such an experienced roster. They lose quarterback Brock Purdy. They lose the tight end Charlie Kolar. They lose uh, Brees Hall, the running back. This offense was incredibly experienced last year, but... Instead, number 56 in PPA per drive on offense, number 101 in rushing success rate with Brees Hall back there. Uh, the passing success rate was pretty good, number 23. Explosive play rate, you don't expect a ton of explosive plays from this offense at number 70 uh, there as far as explosive play rate goes. I look at this, and this is not a team. Like what, What's crazy to me, and, and this is you'll figure out why I like these analytics the way that I do, uh, the PPA margin is predicted points added. So it's basically what can you expect from each play on offense and defense, right? So they were 52 in that metric. Number 56 on offense, number 44 on defense. But the net points per drive, which is a different one, that is just fact, right? It, like those, that's not predicted points added. That is the actual points that you got. They were number 19. You don't normally see a big difference there. Uh, when you look at this, and I'll pull it up on the screen here, uh, you see they are number 19 in net points per drive, but 52 in PPA margin. Uh, Oklahoma, 26 in PPA margin, number 28 in net points per drive. Uh, Baylor, 23 in PPA margin, number 20 in net points per drive. Oklahoma State was very similar to what Iowa State did, number 27 in PPA margin, but number 12 in net points per drive. That's what makes this so interesting. Like, what happened with this team where, and, and I think some of it had to be turnovers, et cetera. I mean, it was just a weird, weird thing. Uh, let's move to the offense first. Let's start off with that. The goal of the offense this year is avoid a collapse and develop new skill talent for the quarterback Deckers, right? Um, all the big weapons and the leaders are gone. Uh, the new quarterback, Hunter Deckers, does have the wide receiver, Xavier Hutchinson, and three starting offensive linemen to lean on. So that's good. Uh, again, I bring up the rushing success rate. They were number 101 in uh, rushing success rate. That's even with Brees Hall. I, they were number 114 in stuff rate. The offensive line was number 72 in havoc rate allowed. Like, the offensive line was, by all metrics, a weak link last year. So, if they fix the offensive line this year, what does that mean for the offense? Uh, I think we all kind of knew what we had with Brock Purdy I'm curious what Deckers is going to be. So, uh, on defense, most of that 2021 defense is gone. They only bring back five players that had 400-plus snaps, two defensive linemen, two linebackers, one defensive back. It's going to be a tricky year to develop newcomers when you got so much changeover on offense. Uh, looking at the – I mean, they got 38% returning production. That's number 128 in the country. There's only 131 teams. 37% uh, returning on offense, 39% returning on defense. That's putrid. I mean, it's really bad. The roster strength took a major, major L. They're number 76 in roster strength in the country. That includes recruiting rankings and experience. So that's a bit of an issue. They're number 58 on defense, number 82 on offense. And uh, those roster strength numbers, courtesy of the guys over at CFB Winning Edge, go go talk to Nick. Sign up for Nick's Patreon. I'm telling you, it's fantastic stuff over there. Uh, there's still studs on defense. The defensive end, McDonald, the cornerback, Johnson, linebacker, Vance, uh, can they be leaders on a unit that was number 16 in Havoc rate and number 11 in scoring opportunities? The defense was good. That's what actually won them the majority of their games last year, and it felt like the offense gave some of that stuff away. Uh, they were projected favorites in eight games, even with all that changeover, which just blows my mind. 
But at some of that, I guess, would have to be based on what they were over the last couple of seasons or over the last, like, three three years, whatever it is. Uh, they've got eight toss-ups. So they're favorites in eight games, but they do have eight games where uh, the score is projected to be within one score. I mean, again, this is another one of those where anything goes here. Uh, you got to... You got to expect quite a drop off at this point. Again, how much of a drop off can you have from seven and six? They were incredibly experienced and still went seven and six last year. The goal, I think, for them this year is simply a bowl game. Just get to a bowl game. Now, the key to that is getting Deckers comfortable early, and they need the offensive line game and the run game to be significantly better. I don't know if you can do that uh, with a new running back, but if you if you fix the offensive line issue. You ought to be able to put anybody in there, and not just anybody, I understand. But you you ought to be able to put somebody in there that can be successful, much more so than they were last year. Uh, Defense, going to need a lot of work. They got three studs that they need to step up as leaders for the new guys. If the culture is that good, is as good as everybody says it is, then the defense will be fine. They were only number 99 in takeaways last year, which means their turnover margin of number 57 is... Uh, pretty ridiculous. That means they did not turn the ball over very much. Uh, but number 99 in takeaways, I mean, that's kind of insane. <laughs> kind of insane. It'd be nice for that to improve. Uh, I do have a question, though, about Matt Campbell. And obviously, that would be like, is is he an Ames lifer? Like, it, did he miss his chance to go somewhere else? Or does he even want to? Now, obviously, everything you read about the guy, he seems pretty content to be the head coach in Ames, Iowa. But I don't know. Uh, I wonder if he has regrets about it, anything like that. He seems very bought into the community, so maybe this isn't a question at all. Maybe this is not even something worth uh, debating. But either way, I've got the Cyclones going 5-7 and seven this year. Uh, I mean, just a, a loss at Iowa, loss to Baylor, loss to Kansas State, at Texas, Oklahoma, uh, at Oklahoma State and at TCU. So I've got wins over Texas Tech, West Virginia, uh, at Kansas, Ohio, and Southeast Missouri. Now, the win total is 6.5. It is juiced to the under at minus 125. I mean, their conference odds, like to win the conference, are plus 1,800. It's 18-1. to 1. I don't like their odds to win the conference this year. I think they can get to a bowl game. They're going to have to beat somebody they're not expected to beat which I say that, and of course, they're still projected favorites in eight games. I don't know if they will still be favorites in eight games once we get through the season, but we shall see. Uh, Iowa's not going to be great this year, so even though that game's on the road, I mean, you take care of business and you don't beat yourself, don't turn the ball over, you're definitely going to have a shot. Baylor, uh, they probably should have beaten Baylor last year. That was a 31-29 game. Uh, Kansas State, yeah, you can beat Kansas State. At Texas, yeah, I think you can probably show up there. Like, there's there's nobody on this schedule that you're scared of. There's nobody that you can't beat. The issue is, I just don't know how talented the roster is. And that's where it becomes a problem for Matt Campbell and that bunch. It, you've got a lot of inexperience here. You're going to have to develop some guys. With Iowa being your second game of the year, that's going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, you still got studs. I mean, if Hunter Deckers comes in, and he's just flinging the ball to Xavier Hutchinson, and the offensive line is better, and you're finally able to get a running game going. Yeah, your defense ought to be able to hold tight, especially against somebody like Iowa. I, again, I've got them five and seven. I think they could make a bowl game. You know, I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't. But regardless, it is what it is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.